curious about what it's like to be a mercenary in 2024? Join us as we delve into the high-risk, high-reward world of mercenaries and explore the challenges, thrills, and dangers they face on a daily basis. From covert operations to intense combat situations, this video provides a glimpse into the life of a modern-day mercenary. Watch now to uncover the reality behind this intriguing profession. Mercenaries or private security contractors are soldiers or individuals with military experience who fight or participate in a conflict for economic gain. Regardless of the ideology, nationality, political, or religious preferences of the side they fight for. While there is much that can be criticized about mercenaries, it is a real and undeniable fact. As you listen to this, there are thousands of them deployed and fighting all over the world. In recent years, soldiers of fortune have gained immense popularity due to movies and video games, as well as the increase in hiring for recent conflicts and the latest scandals. However, this type of soldier has existed for a long time. In fact, thousands and thousands of years ago, mercenaries have been part of conflicts. For example, the Persian prince and general Cyrus the Younger hired the 10,000, a large army of Greek mercenaries, to take the throne of Persia from his brother Artaxerxes around 2400 years ago. During the American Revolutionary War, Great Britain hired German mercenaries to fight against the American colonists, and during World War II, 10% of all forces fighting for the American side were mercenaries. Today, mercenaries and military contractors form a private army that is larger than the entire US military. The exact number is debatable, but some estimates suggest that more than 180,000 individual contractors of many nationalities work for the U.S. government in the Middle East and other regions, performing a variety of jobs for which the U.S. has paid more than $100 billion. Clearly, the division between mercenary and non-mercenary soldiers is becoming blurred. According to the Geneva Conventions, a lawful combatant is a soldier who belongs to the armed forces of a state. Lawful combatants can engage in hostilities with an enemy of the state and must be recognized as prisoners of war if captured. One of the amendments to the Geneva Conventions clearly defines all the criteria a soldier must meet to be considered a mercenary. A mercenary is a person specifically recruited to participate in a conflict but is not a member of the armed forces of the state that recruited them. They actively participate in hostilities. They are motivated by economic gain and are paid substantially more than the ordinary soldiers of the state, and they are not citizens of the states involved in the conflict. It is important to mention that there is a division and debate between the term mercenary and private military contractor. According to expert explanations, both fight for money, but mercenaries are individual soldiers who can be hired by whoever pays them. They have no ties to a company or state, they just fight for money. Private military contractors PMCs, on the other hand, work for a recognized company that is registered with the authorities of a country where they have their base of operations. The current global expenditure on private contractors and mercenaries is estimated at around $250 billion, five times more than the military budget of a powerful country like the United Kingdom. Today, the private security forces market is enormous and it is not surprising that many companies have emerged to capitalize on the billions of dollars available. Some of the private military companies that have existed or currently exist are Blackwater, Dincorp, Aranus, Global Risk Strategies, Roll Militar Web Professional Resources, and Canopy Academy. As with any job, an application must be completed to be considered for a position. The candidate must submit an online application or a resume so the company can verify their military experience and review their skills. Security contractors can be deployed anywhere in the world and can be used by armed forces, government agencies, or corporations. Here are some of the tasks and missions they can perform. Training and protecting guards in the Democratic Republic of the Congo to stop poachers threatening endangered animals like the black rhino. Providing security, training, and planning for global corporations like BP, Exxon, and Dincorp. Guarding high-ranking public officials or other political dignitaries like the U.S. Ambassador in Iraq or the Secretary of State. Protecting oil facilities in Iraq. Conducting anti-narcotics operations in Colombia and Mexico. Providing security on commercial vessels against possible pirate attacks. There are two main reasons why many countries choose to hire mercenaries for their wars, money and time. 
Mercenaries or private contractors earn between $15,000 and $25,000 a month, depending on their skills and experience, which is five to eight times more than what a regular soldier earns monthly. However, in the long run, it is much less costly than maintaining a soldier in the armed forces, as mercenaries are simply paid for their service and equipment, without including life insurance, medical, pensions, or compensations. Time is another key factor. Mercenaries and contractors come from diverse backgrounds, including different armed forces and police bodies, giving them an advantage over a soldier fresh out of boot camp. Countries don't have to worry about recruiting, training, and deploying soldiers for several years. A single call is enough to have experienced soldiers ready for battle. However, within these ranks, there may be individuals with shady backgrounds, including those dishonorably discharged from the military. Life as a mercenary can be extremely stressful and dangerous, but it can be appealing to those ex-military personnel seeking adrenaline and an impressive paycheck. Mercenaries are indebted to the government or corporation paying for their services, which may mean they don't support the same goals as the citizens of the homeland. The presence of well-paid mercenaries can weaken a country's military force. Retention rates decrease as quality soldiers leave the armed forces for more lucrative positions as mercenaries. Additionally, as mercenaries take on more responsibilities, the connection between military professionalism and public service can become eroded. Because of these risks, some countries have advocated for a blanket ban on mercenary activities, but critics argue that banning them would do more harm than good. Mercenaries, when paid and governed by clear guidelines, can be effective soldiers who benefit the military in many ways. Mercenaries typically fight alongside regular army soldiers, so some integration and coordination are necessary. However, they often don't share information with the troops, which can have serious consequences during a battle. The paradox lies in what would happen if all wars in the world were privatized. Mercenaries offer the means of war to anyone who can afford it, altering who, how, and why wars are fought. Mercenaries are becoming more common, and the ultra-wealthy and corporations are becoming new types of superpowers. What do you think? Do you agree that companies for hiring mercenaries or private military contractors should exist, or would it be better to ban them altogether? Let me know your opinion in the comments. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram, where there is great new content every day. Have a good day.